Hey guys, it's me, Peter Love, my first experience is your key to class one. So thank you guys for being here today. Uh, we are starting uh, a new chapter in blindness.edu. Basically, we are changing up uh, blindness.edu from being a video series to being a podcast slash radio show. Uh, it's going to be broadcasted on the Perseverance Entertainment Network as well as many other networks, uh, including that this is also going to be on iTunes, Google Play, all those great different places. So let's get right into our very first show. So I figure the very first show should be something very, uh, you know, introductory, uh, which is going to be, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about myself. And then I'm also going to explain kind of like what does uh, blindness and visual impairment mean, uh, the differences between the two. So let's get right into it. So to begin, uh, if you're new to the Perseverance Network or you're new to the podcast in general or to the show in general, blindness.edu, uh, my name is Peter Elvich. Uh, my belief is perseverance is your key, the impossible. Perseverance is my key word, thus the Perseverance Network that I've been uh, creating for a long time. Uh, my disability or, um, you know, basically a bit different ability, you know, whatever you want to call it, I don't hold myself back when I say disability. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, categorizing it, I guess. Um, is I am, I have a uh, corn rod dystrophy and glaucoma. Uh, between these two, my vision acuity is 20 over 1600 or worse, uh, depending on days and things like that. Um, basically what this means is that I, for, for my vision, I don't have clarity vision. Uh, I can see major, major objects and that's about it. Uh, you know, so if like, for instance, um, my computer screen, I can see that there's a giant, um, area of light, but I cannot see the definitions and the fine details of the, of my computer screen. Uh, I cannot read print. I cannot, um, well, I can write, but I mean, I can't visually write, you know, so if you were to follow along with your finger, uh, or follow around, follow along with your pen. So, um, that's ex basically what um, my my visual acuity is. The, the conditions. So, um, cone and rod dystrophy is basically the degeneration of the cones and rod cells in your eyes or your stem cells in your eyes. Uh, what the cones and rods do is they distinguish upon uh, your color and light perceptors. Uh, so, as they would degenerate, you would lose your color perception as well as your clarity vision. Um, as I did forgot to mention, yes, I am colorblind. I did lose my color perception um, a lot faster than um, my clarity vision. Uh, so I am colorblind, but uh, despite being colorblind, despite losing my clarity vision, I do you know shows like this. Uh, I'm a part of different shows with other people. Uh, I am an artist. I am an owner of my own company and network and so many other things. And I think that it's, it's really, it, it, it really is fascinating because uh, a lot of people told me this really interesting thought is that, you know, that basically I've been going through life and they're like, you really don't, you, it, it's like your brain has been tricked into thinking that, you know, you're, that, that you're thinking that you're not blind, but you are. And the reason, the reason why they say that is because it's like your, it's like, it's like having blindness and and then just keep on going no matter what no matter what happens because you know that's what normal people normal uh people would have you know if they don't if they had perfect vision acuity they just keep on going they just keep on creating things keep on doing normal life and some people in the world just you know if you have blindness or visual impairment um there's just some things that you're seeing that you can or cannot do or that you should or should not do. And because I'm doing those things, people are like, well, you know, you just, you know, you're going as if you're not blind. And in my opinion, um, I mean, because blindness before has held me back. And it's, it's the honest truth. It's for every single person that has blindness, visual impairment in the world. It has held us back in some shape or form in the past. But um, ultimately, like going forward, like, you know, creating new opportunities, talking to new people, all these great different things, creating the show, for instance, uh, creating YouTube videos and all that. Um, I do it because I love to do it. And I wanted to figure out a way. I wanted to find a way. Um, one of the major things that I do, uh, that I probably mentioned earlier is that I'm an artist. Uh, I do visual art. I do visual pixel art. Um, despite my blindness, I use text-to-speech programs, uh, memory of RGB code for because I'm colorblind, because I don't have color perception, um, because I don't have clarity perception of my own work. So to be qu quite fair, um, most of the recent artworks that I do, I don't know what they look like. 
I really don't know what they look like. And people have been telling me that I do, you know, fantastic work. And the thing is, is that um, I really, you know, if we're talking about being an artist and being, you know, someone with blindness, visual impairment, you know, like, why do you do the art if you can't see it or if you can't um, enjoy it? Well, here's the thing is that I do it initially because I like to do it and I like to, you know, I like to create things and I like to create things for people. I like to make people smile. I like to make people inspired, empowered, all these great different things. So if I can't necessarily see it, that's okay because the amount of reactions and the amount of things that I get from people is significant enough by itself. Um, so, you know, I've just, I've been continuing to be an artist. I've been continuing to do a whole ton of things and, uh, it's, it's fun. It's interesting. It's crazy. And people tell me, you know, you should not be doing what you're doing. You should not be going to the places that you're going, you know, all this great different stuff. And it's just like, uh, that's just who I am. I'm just that type of person that just likes to keep going. And I want to encourage you guys out there. Like if you're listening to this and you're blind, you have blindness or visual impairment, um, you can do anything. Like if you're in that particular rut or particular area where you just like, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out how to overcome my blindness or try to overcome things, trying to get to that area where you feel like you can do anything. Uh, really understand that um, you have, like everybody has a passion. And if you can find your passion, something you're really going to fight for, something you're really going to work for, something you're going to go through the darkest days with and, and have the most epic best days of your life with, then I would say go and start doing it. Um, you know, it's because it's really important. It's really going to help you break out of that zone of that you can't do anything or that you feel like you can't do much because you're blind or visually impaired. Um, it's really going to take you to heights where you are going to want to learn every second of every day and you're going to do things that seem crazy to other people and that's okay to be crazy because a lot of us with disabilities and blindness and visual impairment have to be crazy we have to do things in different ways than the rest of the public and different ways than everyone else and that can be seen as crazy but you know that's just the way that we do and then the next thing you know you're doing something that you love you're doing things that are considered impossible or seem impossible to other people you're educating people you're inspiring people you know and you're just doing what you love and doing what you're doing and that you know it's ultimately what I what I did is I found art and I found my passion just at the right time uh, when I was starting to, uh, when I had corn rod dystrophy became a major issue in my life where I started losing my vision and in increments and major things. I really, uh, figured out how to see, cause I, I was losing my vision at the time and I thought at the beginning that I would never be able to do art again. And, uh, for a while I didn't do art and for a while I was held back and for a while I didn't, you know, I was stuck. I didn't do much. And all of a sudden, you know, uh, I, one day I was just like, you know what? I got to figure this out. I got to do art. I got to do something. Um, I went onto YouTube. I went to Google. I went on to so many different places, searched different types of art forms. What can I do? What can I still do? What can I use with screen readers? Things like that. I came to pixel art. It's very, very straightforward. It's very, um, calculated. It's very specific in its nature. And because of this, it's very doable by my abilities. Uh, so when I figured out that I could do that and I could get and start creating pieces, I just started creating pieces and it made me, it pushed me forward, you know, cause people were seeing my art, people were seeing, you know, um, videos online, people were seeing, you know, all sorts of different things and it kept pushing me forward more and more and more. And, you know, and people were saying, you know, you're doing, you know, impossible things. And I'm just like, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just doing me and I hope you're, I hope you're getting inspired and empowered by it and enjoying it because that's the whole idea of it. You know, like I said, at the beginning of the show, perseverance is my key to the impossible. I want you guys to know that you can do the impossible, that if you, if you keep fighting, you keep doing things, um, as much as humanly possible and working through your challenges, you can do the impossible or you can do what per is perceived as impossible or, you know, I mean, because we talk about what is impossible and I mean, there's so many things in our daily life that have been considered impossible works and yet here they are existing because people decided to go crazy and be crazy and do incredible things that weren't a part of normal society. 
Uh, we have light bulbs, we have computers, we have all sorts of different things because someone decided they wanted to create something and if it was different, so what? Um, I want to get back into uh, the thought process though is that when we're talking, uh, you know, we've, we've pretty much talked about myself, you know, what I do a little bit more. If you guys want to learn more about me, uh, I will leave information at the end of this episode as to how to find me. But uh, the, the final thing that we want to go back here to is like, what is blindness, visual impairment? So the idea of blindness and visual impairment is this. So like visual impairment is the ability to have... Um, have a vision acuity or a visual ability that can be corrected either by glasses, by uh, electronic magnifiers, physical magnifiers, uh, basically adaptations where it's to a point where you still have clarity to read, clarity to see different things, uh, but you need corrections. Uh, that's what visual visual impairment means. Now, blindness, blindness is both complicated and not. So let me start with the complicated side of it. So blindness it depends, I believe, upon the legal uh, the, the legal realm of blindness. So like the legal limit or to be legally blind, I believe is 20 over 400 vision acuity. If you have anything less than 20 over 400 vision acuity, you're considered vision impaired. Uh, if you have anything uh, worse than 20 over 400, then you're considered legally blind. Uh, so you can be legally blind and still have perception of your world uh, in some aspects. And then obviously total blindness or, you know, total legal blindness is, you know, complete uh, non-visual perception of the world. Uh, in my case, because I have 20 over 1600 vision acuity, um, I am considered legally blind, although um, I'm pretty much blind because the way that I perceive my world is through audio and through tactile and through understanding uh, and, you know, using a white cane. Uh, so really, like, when we look at the idea of, like, you know, someone with blindness, visual impairment, for instance, going to a work, you know, going to work or going and doing normal things and things like that, it's just a matter of adapting life to you know, changing up how, how we go about it, you know? So like, instead of like, for instance, um, you know, we have iPhones, right? And instead of like, for some reason, for, for some, uh, basic reason that a person with uh, full vision acuity, how they would look on their phone for text messages, for instance, right? Instead of that, instead of us looking at our phones, cause we can't look at them, we would use a built-in screen reader called voiceover that would uh, help us navigate our phone to get to uh, messages and read the messages in our phone. Um, let's say, you know, instead of uh, searching our phones, you know, you know, via visually, uh, we could use Siri, all these different things. Uh, how would we identify, you know, paperwork or cards or whatever it is? There's OCR technology that would read uh, that would translate things into text or read it to us after capturing it via an image. There is uh, navigation softwares like um, Microsoft Soundscapes to help us uh, navigate the world, you know, via like telling you like directions and things that are around you for landmarks, for traveling and for navigation. There's so much uh, things that people don't realize that it's just like, it's just a matter of changing up your perception of the world and changing up the perception of yourself and understanding that, you know, you just have to do things a little bit differently. It's completely normal uh, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, so ultimately when we're ta when we're thinking about this, you know, when we're thinking about blindness, visual impairment, we're thinking about, you know, uh, doing the impossible and thinking about uh, perseverance, things like that. Um, it, it just, it really needs to be hammered in that you need to, you know, you need to find something that you love. You need to find, um, you need to really find inside yourself what you need to do and what you need to improve on and how, how you need to get better, basically doing some reflection time and just really trying to keep forward. And, and the thing is, is that, you know, the, the passion and trying to find your passion things that isn't going to immediately pop up in the middle of the world, and just be noticeable or to you in two seconds that might take a little bit of time but as long as you continue to try to go forward and try to be a better person you know try to be better than you were the previous day you're gonna get there it's just it might take a little bit of time um but you know 
ultimately when I when I want you guys to take from this this uh, show is really the understanding of blindness and visual impairment really the understanding that blindness and visual impairment those who have it um, are just really acting you know different you know they act differently because they have to because they're changing up the way that they navigate and how they do things and how they work in their lives but that doesn't make anybody um, you know, less different or, or less um, important because they decide to do it a different way and to really understand that, you know, you guys can do anything that you truly want to do. Um, so I think that this is a fantastic wrap up for the first show. I've been trying, I'm going to try to keep these shows between 15 and 17 minutes. Uh, so what I want you guys to do is that if this is on Facebook, uh, YouTube, whatever social media network it is, and you happen to be listening to this, please leave some comments, leave some thoughts, uh, like, favorite, share the video. That would be fantastic uh, because it will be in a video format for social media. Uh, if you guys are listening to this on the radio, if you guys are listening to this on the web, uh, please feel free, you know, make sure to share it if you've enjoyed it or you want somebody specifically to hear this. Uh, otherwise, thank you guys so very, very much for being here for this episode of blindness.edu. There's going to be future shows. Again, this is going to become a podcast format, so it is no longer going to be a video, visual, YouTube video kind of format. Uh, it will still be on YouTube, but it will not be um, me speaking in front of a camera because we might have guests, we might have other people, we might have other topics, things like that uh, coming forward. So thank you guys so very, very much for being here. Remember the perseverance is your key to the impossible and I will see you guys in the next blindness.edu show.